So you said you have two of you have one other podcast and then this one. So basically, the uh, the idea behind this podcast is that I want to have many different types of people on it, and so it's going to have wedding focused stuff, um, and that'll all be sorted to like just the wedding YouTube and Instagram and everything like that, and then for other interests like my girlfriend was on a podcast of the day obviously yeah. Yeah. dog training so we talked about that and like the industry I just I find people very fascinating at their core because everybody just has a different type of like upbringing and story yeah so I want to bring that out in people who are common now the name of the the show is was supposed to be notes from nobodies Okay. But I, I don't oh. know because it's kind of catchy, yeah. but it's also like you're not a nobody. You're not a nobody. You're yeah. somebody, right? So is it is it just stories of anyone that you you want to in, like talk to or is it like a specific industry, business owners, like what for that one? Yeah, it's honestly just people that are interesting. Yeah, like cool. People that I'm around, yeah. like one of my, uh, her name's Michelle Graydon. She's a psychotherapist for, yeah. you know, some pretty crazy, interesting cool. uh yeah. Stories and stuff. So oh, yeah, she's a psychotherapist. Definitely. How so, fun. Yeah. You'll, you'll figure the name out. Yeah, it'll be. It's a work in progress. I obviously. just found this one because I've been more like now that I'm doing one, I've been finding more um, like researching more. And I found one that I'm really liking. It's uh, for uh, podcast for overthinkers. I can't think of the title right now, of course, but it's all every subject we overthink and I'm obsessed with it. So I should know the name of it right now. To, well, you have to text me later. I will. It's we'll, fun. We'll check it out. Yeah. So, Brittany, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and taking your time out of your day to chat with me. Um, so we know that you are an officiant, mm -hmm. but there's also some very interesting things you do beyond just officiating. Um, but first, I would just love to hear where did you come from? Like, like how did you get here? What did you do before? Kind of your whole little backstory as much as you want to delve into it. Ooh, cool. Like the to Notes version. So I've been in Phoenix 15 years from New Mexico. So all desert baby. Um, my background officiating just found me. Um, before that, I did yoga and wellness, like meditation, mental health gotcha. type of stuff. Yeah. So um, and that's just been that's been doing that for 20 years for myself, like my own self-awareness, you know, mindfulness journey taking care of myself that way. And then I've been teaching yoga for about 10 years. So how I actually got into officiating was my friends and shout out to them. They're amazing. They're called the Arizona Elopement Collective. Yes, so we know them. Yes. That's, okay. <laughs> so answer. during COVID, they started building this kind of niche, you know, um, what they're doing is for the elopements and they're like, they wanted to hire on officiants. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Rich, he had known me through yoga. So what's funny is actually everything for me, Evan, that I found that like is life altering and wonderful was never like A to B to C, right? If we like look full circle hindsight, like I used to give him smoothies at the, you know, at the mountainside fitness oh while I was God. teaching yoga in between making smoothies. So oh, it's, but my background with yoga, connecting with people, doing ceremony, I think is what makes my officiating experience a little different because um, I create a whole energy when I'm with a couple. Like for me, it's like, and when I write a script or write a script for the wedding, it's, I feel like it's channeled, like it's not me. It's a very cool experience that just found me. Mm. And even like learning how to do a ceremony work with a couple, do it my way. You know, like anything, any business owner has to refine those things, but it's been very beautiful hmm. and very different. All the types of couples I get to work with too, which I'm sure you've experienced. Oh yeah, definitely. So it's been awesome. So it's, I'd love to hear a little bit more about like the, the script writing always fascinates mm -hmm. me because mm -hmm. usually like. It's, it's always different with the officiants that I've worked with. Sometimes it's like off the cuff. Sometimes it's literally like what the couple writes for you that mm -hmm. you say. Mm -hmm. um, how does it work with your business and what is your creative writing process? Ooh, I love this question. So it, again, it has refined over the years. Um, when I first started, you know, 
you, you have a template, like there's I do's, there's vows, there's ring exchange. So you have like the format, typically the order too. Like you're, you're not gonna, you say the I do's first, right? Cause that's your statement of, yeah, I'm doing this willingly. So, but my process of a script is really cool because what I've done, I have a, I very much personalize each ceremony. Like in my, when I first started, I just said yes to every wedding I could because I was so excited. So I would do a backyard ceremony, two days notice, just pull something up. But for me, it's like, I don't want to go up there and say, love is dot, dot, dot. And it, and, and the couple's like, oh my God, I hate this. So to get around that, I really get to know the couple. So I have a questionnaire and it's kind of my process in working with them mm. that helps me write the ceremony. So n not one ceremony is ever the same. Yeah. Now I might have templates for my workflow, like a religious Christian template or hand fasting unity ceremony that I kind of pull from. But I'm asking questions that I don't put everything in the ceremony because I also ask very personal, deep questions. Some just fun ones. Mm -hmm. Some like, what's your pet peeve? I'm not going to really put that right. in the ceremony. <laughs> but what it does is we have our planning meeting. I'm feeling their dynamic. Are they really sarcastic together? Um, are they more serious together? Um, you know, you kind of start. So that's fun. It's like I see their dynamic. I read their answers. And then it's almost like. I'm feeling the subtext. That's why I think I'm good at what I do because mm. I've always loved people. I went to, I did psychology. We're talking about background. I did psychology very briefly in college because then I didn't finish college, but gotcha. I've always liked seeing people, understanding them. Mm. So what I think is just cool is it, it literally just feels like it pulls out of me. Like I'll be writing and a word will pop up in my head. And then I'll research that word or not a word like a, I don't know. I could be marrying couples that are into baseball and then I'll get like a ping, like Google this baseball. And then I'll somehow make it a metaphor. Oh, <laughs> it's like, I it's see. so, it's so very much so my art, my art board. Dots. I'm connecting dots all over. It's very, very fun. It's one of my favorite parts of the process of yeah. from beginning to end with a client is the writing. How long do you think it takes you approximately? Just yeah. Checking, checking the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How long do you think it takes approximately to like write from start to finish like one script for a couple? So I used to be, I think it was more from just getting confident in my writing. So I would do a lot more iterations of the ceremony. Right. Right. Draft. draft yeah. More draft, draft, draft. <laughs> and then I realized it actually starts, the, if you do it too much, it starts to lose its essence mm. or you you have one really great kind of found, like foundation or theme, and then you keep changing it, it keeps changing. So um, hour wise, I know I've tried to like do this, especially with my, my pricing, like how much does, long does it take? I have no idea. I don't, For, I don't, I don't really it's know. It's hard to that. do that. You, do you get that really question know. with editing too? No, never. never? Okay. See, I, I don't, it's something that interests me because you know, like time is obviously like what we're working with. Everybody's working with time. So I, I, I'm always curious how long something takes. And usually like sometimes it's different for me, right? Like yeah. sometimes some edits will take like four weeks, literally. Yeah. And that's like, that's real fast. Yeah. Some four months. And so uh, it, for me, it varies because of the creative yeah. flow is different. And each couple is different. But I'm curious, is it like yeah. the same for you? Pretty or? similar, especially with how much they want in the ceremony. So for mm. example, some couples want a unity ceremony and that's what I always try to suggest because that's a really fun way to make it them. Yeah. Um, so like writing a segue into a unity ceremony and again, based on their theme, because mm. you could have like sand pouring, right? Right. You can say a basic like to becoming one unity ceremony, but I might talk about the color they pick and why they pick it yeah. or so I'm really a trying to more like symbolism. Yeah, more, more symbolism. Story I it. geek out on symbolism. Mm. So um, that can take longer but more than time i find i do three to four edits okay. of the ceremony one to two is like my and then three is like i'm almost there and then actually my fourth or my final i do on the day of the ceremony i started doing this yeah. mm, because i'll have it like done like yeah. if something happens in the morning and like i don't know i get a flat tire and have to rush to a wedding the ceremony's already done before the day of but the day of if i can look over and do like 
couple little switches. Adjustments. Sometimes there's really cute, fun things. Like I'll have like an opening joke. I really try not to do jokes, but sometimes depending on the couple, <laughs> like maybe they have a sarcastic inside joke mm -hmm. and I kind of bring it in and it's an art to, and you, I think to your point, you had said when you asked the question, I've had to work on the like delivering it right because mm -hmm. you so in the beginning you're reading like you're reading and I right. think that's also the difference with someone like me who's a professional or done it way more times than someone who's done it one or two times because they're they're reading it behind the a paper yeah. yeah so for me I'm much more conversational almost now so mm. um mine is more bullet points like I'll have some paragraphs I'll read outright yeah and there's certain again like, I don't know what other word to say segues like transitions from like vows to ring warming or ring ceremony right. all like i won't look at that i'll just kind of just say play off of what feels right in the moment so, so it's it's is it is it kind of like memorization like do you memorize some of your script i never memorize interesting no um now could i now do one without anything in front of me i'm Probably. sure <laughs> yeah I've but done so many. <laughs> it still kind of scares me i think because i do this personalized stuff yeah, like i'm saying true. things um, without giving away too much of my, how, uh, my presence, process, yeah. <laughs> but um, there are parts where I'm reading to them what they wrote about each other. Oh, it's yeah. so special in the ceremony. And sometimes they never read it. So I'll be like, you know, like Joe, privately. you said, you described her to me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they're just like, oh. well, usually tears. I don't, I'm right. a crier. I've had to work on that actually. Really? <laughs> no, actually when I'm in the, like, in this the is my hat, a yes. fishing hat. I don't cry, but I'm a crier in real life. So yeah, yeah, I love it. I, I remember, yeah, I remember working with you on Julianne and Omar's wedding mm -hmm. and I remember filming it and I was chuckling behind the camera. Like you got the crowd to like laugh and like interact and stuff, mm -hmm. which I thought was amazing. And you use their like personal, like you said, they're like personal stories, um, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like, and that's why I used it in the film too, mm -hmm. because I thought it was so unique and I thought it was like, just, it just really helped the mm -hmm. film um and their story of course but um so they yeah. they were funny for multiple reasons so julianne i actually knew through a long time ago so i didn't know her yeah um or do know her uh prior to her hiring me so she's a friend so there's already a little more relaxedness for mm. me if i've known them longer yeah but like not to go too far off topic i've done it for very close friends and that's actually harder to me because oh, I, I almost tell. get too, well, I get too comfortable. It's like <laughs> you have, you can't be, this isn't best man speech, right? right. Time or best maid of honor speech. This is, I'm supposed to hold the space. Like mm. now with Julianne and Omar, they were, she was so nervous. Like I know she she's was only like, been, she was shake, shake visceral. Literally. And I've had that happen with brides before where their breath rate. Oh no, I just remembered this because I'm talking about it. <laughs> she actually, because she knows I do yoga, she had me and it was beautiful. She had me, she said, can you meditate me? I don't think that's how she said it. Oh, that's amazing. So I put my, before we went on, I put my hands on her shoulders and I grounded her. I did like a grounding ex yeah. exercise. So um, like, just like that opens my heart. Like any, I feel like God brings me the people that will receive me. I don't know how to say it any better. No, I like, like it. Like will receive they give me the creative flow, which I'm, I'm sure like you, you're creative. You want someone that appreciates your work, but also gives you the reins to like. To take it how you Yeah, you don't want to be micromanaged, it. but you right. want to, yeah. Have you ever had an experience where it was like a little too micromanagey? You know which one? Without naming names. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, one that surprised me was actually a, perf she was a professional in the industry. Whoa, and interesting. I yeah. thought it was going to be such a different experience because yeah. she's in the industry and they were very private. So they didn't really want to answer mm -hmm. the questionnaire. It was more of she was very open later, but she she didn't really allow me to like, hey, fill out this thing. Like, she, yeah, yeah, it was very like guarded. Yeah, interesting. it felt like it. Or just more, and I, I felt like, um, I didn't know if it was because she was busy, right? Because things happen, True. like, sometimes yeah. you can't get a hold of a bride, or, and then you have the brides that call you, like, text you or email all you time. all the time. Yeah. So, um, 
I've never, well, I've never had a bad experience. I will say that. Mm. I've never had a bridezilla. Wow. Us, have you? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Should we say well, that? These things? <laughs> so I've had a close call, let's say. Okay. We've had, it was like a couple hours during the day that I was like, ooh, is this going to go south? <laughs> and then we ended up resolving it and everything went yeah. fine. So not like a full bridezilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the four, like during the just talking yeah. consultation, totally fine. She was probably just having yeah. moments throughout the day. Like yeah. the stress in yeah, it, and she sure. projected it yep. in your direction because <laughs> yep. you're around her all the time. <laughs> yeah, you're <were> there. <laughs> <laughs> so Get that out of my face. Exactly. So. Like, hey, if you need a moment, just like have you. So, um, who was I talking to? Oh, I was talking to one of my photography friends, and I want to ask you this question: sure. Have Ooh, you ever ha- have you ever had someone that like hires you, or I think in this example she was hired through someone else like the event coordinator hired her okay right like yeah. it was one of like those weddings like coordinator. the planner like they gave leeway to the planner yeah but they and then she, they like didn't want to like really kiss or do anything like wait, 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 the it, cu- no. so the couple oh. the couple wouldn't like they were not cooperative with the photographer oh so i'm wondering if that's ever was happened it to first you sight? <laughs> was it <laughs> love at first sight have you seen that show oh no 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 i have it <laughs> it's oh, like gosh. how they're not like kissing yeah. or anything what i think that's it was, crazy yeah um, i i don't think i've ever had an experience where they were not touchy mm-hmm. right oh i have had an experience this was in a, a wedding though so i'm glad about the I'm yeah, glad yeah. about this but i took a, a couple out for an adventure session um and they didn't book me for a wedding Thank God. <laughs> but, like this isn't yeah. this dynamic fills off. <laughs> and uh, we went up to Sedona and the guy, we, we met at like a bar, little wine shop just mm-hmm. to like talk beforehand and hang out. And the guy was not having it. Like mm. he was like not talking. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, it, I can't ignore it anymore. Like, are you okay? Like, is there anything going on? Yeah. He's like, I just hate taking pictures. I'm like, first of all, it's video. <laughs> <laughs> Second of Very all, different. I was like, it, you, you'll get out of it what you put into it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, like, if you don't want to be here, like, we can not do this type of thing. And yeah. so I was like giving them the option to cancel right then and there. But yeah. the, the girlfriend, the fiance was like, really no, let's it. do it. Yeah. Kind of. And then, so he was like not kissing her and like, she would have to like force him to do stuff. Oh, it was a really weird vibe. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? Probably not the best fit. Yeah. But. Yeah. yeah so it's the only weird weird thing i've had before but that's yeah. weird for the photographer like an actual wedding that the plan like usually when when planners plan the whole thing and yeah. take leeway yeah. it's usually kind of an expensive wedding am i wrong it yeah she yeah. said it was like super bougie and she just hired all the people so yeah. maybe the couple honestly wouldn't even really want a photographer but um, the the planner like just said well you need a photographer that's like first right. step if you're gonna like yeah. not do other things yeah. That's usually like it's a basis, right? In, Even elopers, like photographer. Yeah. So maybe they mm-hmm. were just a couple that, again, got kind of shy behind the camera. So I feel like I one thing too that I just super value, and I, that's where I always have a conflict of interest when I'm like, oh, it'd be really cool to film luxury weddings. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't know if I could give up that couple relationship. Like I have like three couples that actively text me. And it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. Like like almost every day we're, we're like interacting and, yep. and talking about experiences or like just like joking with each other, just shooting yep. the shit and stuff. Yep. I don't know if I could trade that. You yeah. know what I mean? So tell me, because how you went into that, you're saying with luxury, you don't feel like you'd get that intimate so connection as much? From what I've heard from other videographers yeah. and photographers, because yeah. I've actually never filmed a full on luxury wedding, okay. you know, with like these yeah, yeah, yeah. huge florals and yeah. just like millions of dollars yeah. spent. Yeah. I've heard that you literally, it's almost like associate shooting where you show mm-hmm. up and you're like, hi, I'm the videographer. Nice to meet you. And then you film the day and you never talk right. to them again. Right. And you don't have any inter- interaction with them beforehand either, which okay. is like, it's hard to tell a story. Yeah. Personally, I think. Yeah. Without actually like having a conversation with a couple. Oh, for sure. But I don't and know. that makes sense to me. Like, because you're also part of your, your shot list at that point is also everything else, right? Mm. It's the guest. It's the, the, the details of the table settings, yeah. right? You're not filming the couple as much as you would like on a trailhead, maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, you're probably yeah. onto something where yeah. they, they more value like the venue, the, the people, actual wedding and versus not just them, and them. Their vows. Right. Probably. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm just curious. You're smart. So doing the, <laughs> I'm with you though, like if I had to pick, it's so hard because I've seen so many cool backyard weddings and sure. like, 
let's like again when I did the two days before notice and they're like wearing a sundress in their backyard Mm -hmm. I miss those I had to start saying no because it's just not worth my time like it's not not worth my time it's I can't do a bunch of those and drive everywhere and it's not worth it at the end of the day I have to make yeah you gotta make make your business decisions yeah um but it's like going from all these different spectrums and you know very extravagant like i think the biggest one i did my most bougie one was um the was the phoenician phoenician and um and it was like 250 people so that was probably my like my biggest because as an officiant that was the like I actually was on a stage at that one because they have because it's the seats go so far back. Yeah, you have to, they have to be able to see elevate you. you yeah, yeah, so that everybody can see. And that just felt weird. It really. Yeah. Oh, so, like in what way? Like weird in just or? weird in like one thing I've had to work on in like my confidence. I guess I don't even know if it's the word confidence. I I try very hard to still help the couple ground. And like make it feel like it's just them even though like and then sometimes i'll like say something to the audience like to kind of involve them to like mm-hmm. create this energy i'm all i'm an energy girl yeah. so i don't know how i actually i guess facilitate it okay. but it's harder to it feels harder to me when you have like 10 rows versus like a micro wedding right really all closer to you well so, i mean i, don't I know. feel like i understand that because I don't know if you're into comedy at all, yeah. but like <laughs> to reference my comedy knowledge, yeah. you know, um, people say that like oh, yeah, yeah. commanding a small room mm-hmm. and like getting people really commanding, connected yeah. 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 is way easier. Mm-hmm. Like it can't be too small. It can't yeah. be too large. There's yeah. like a happy medium yeah. where it's like you're zoned in with the audience. Yeah. You think that's kind of like the same way? I, I do. That's a good way to put it. Um, and then just in terms of like my experience with the couple witnessing them elopements are probably my favorite yeah just because even couples that are really easygoing and they don't mind saying vows in front of their friends or family members like they're not as shy Mm -hmm. it's still so different when it's just them and then usually though you know it's also i'm with them longer because they're usually like we're hiking Hiking up up, yeah you know i'm driving in the car with them like i did a grand canyon one where i picked her up in her bridal suite drove her to the meeting point and then we walked up with the oh, the groom and the family yeah. after they did their first look so i'm like in the car with her yeah i'm helping her zip her dress like things oh, that goodness as an officiant you know it's not really i guess if you wrote down my duties that's not my duty no, but yeah. i love i get to play host more mm. when i do smaller weddings and i like that because i call them i like how you said like texting club couples yeah. like they feel like my babies <laughs> i always say my babies <laughs> this is like like as soon as they hire me we start and i'm because their hearts matter to me because of everything they're sharing like they're yeah. sharing very and i love it that's why i ask these questions i've always had a hard time just doing any surface conversation like i'll ask mm. the waiter at a you know at a restaurant or at or... first watch like oh, okay yeah like who like, how's your relationship with your dad? Not really oh that way, gosh, but I'm, just, amazing. I'm that way. <laughs> Sit down. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk. <laughs> oh, honey, you're having a hard day. What's, and people, um, sorry, I ping pong all over the place. No, but you're it's good. Fun. It's so I love this. this um, like people really love that. And it's like someone will say, you know what? I just want to thank you for like taking time to like acknowledge me today. Mm. Like I get that a lot. A, it surprises me that that's not common. But B, it's also like constant feedback for me of like, you're good at this. Mm, you have something. So again, going into like why I'm good at what I do, these are elements of it. Like I just, my my boyfriend, Matt, he said this one day and I loved it. He said, you, you're disarming. Like he said, uh... so any, any person, any room, I can just, whew. like I'd be curious that groom that was yeah. like super... Like if I could soften him, I love to soften people, but that one's probably a bad example. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. The one where you were the video. I would love to, honestly, one. I would love to see you mm-hmm. do that. Cause you probably could. Yeah. There's, I have like. But you're good too. Cause I've seen you with, you have to, I like that word command. 
Mm. You have to make them feel at ease to be able to get them in their authentic, authentic, authentic moments. moments. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely like I'm, I'm editing a Sedona elopement right now that I loved with Kaylee and Andrew. Yeah. And, um, like the, I was listening to just like me talking mm-hmm. and I feel like I have, I don't know if it's disarming. It's probably a different word, Yeah. but like something where it's like, you can just joke and laugh with me yeah. and like be totally yourself. I don't judge you at all. Like yeah. I want to see that because that's the true you. you bring out these, Somehow yeah. I, I help bring that out, yeah. which I hope Super. hopefully is my secret skill, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, but it sounds like you have that well, sort that of makes effect, sense calming of what we're people. supposed to do. Like you're there to, to create this, this beautiful thing that will last forever for them to look back on. So you want to pull out all the magic, right? Yeah. And I'm there to like, mm open your heart, chill the fuck out, be present, be present. Yeah. Um, which is really hard for some people, be, especially going back to like smaller weddings versus larger weddings. It can just feel like, again, if you're in a wedding where you're on a freaking stage, like that Phoenician one, like you, even in this, like I was super chill. And then I knew I sat in front of the camera and I'm like, there's a part of us oh. that like when we know we're being watched. Yeah. So that's also where I think with couples. So, I really feel, you know, throughout the ceremony, if they are more nervous, mm. I talk a lot slower. I have them take breaths. Mm. I have them look at each other longer. Um, pretty much every couple, I'll give this one away. Hey, other officiants, do this because it changes. Well, no, we? do it. Well, Always have them hold hands the whole ceremony. Mm. Put the bouquet down, hold their hand. Ooh, I love that. It switches the energy from the very beginning because when they're standing like this, I don't know. It's just, it's almost like, you know, when you breathe up, I can mm-hmm. see it. Like I can I'm sure see there's them, something like, chemically that happens for sure that they just, <sighs> that's why I always suggest having couples do like, I like first looks yeah. like, or something oh, yeah, or it, like private vows beforehand them. because that it, once you see each other, it's like, ah, yeah. yeah. Thank goodness. Like, okay, we're good. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I love the way you did it at that one wedding. I yeah. think it was amazing. Yeah. And it was like, it was so different from what I've seen other people do. Thank you. you know what I mean, yeah, I just to it. shower you with compliments. No, it's, it's, um, I appreciate it. It's, um, it's, it's been, I don't want to say a challenge. It's been a process for me to understand how to share what I do because it's like, especially from like marketing, like all the business stuff, right? Cause I've always yeah. been a creative, like, how do I like operate the business side? So me marketing myself has been hard, like, cause you might have other officiants. Well, you have some, so typically officiants, right? A lot of them could be friends or family members. Yeah. Um, and then if you have some professional ones, there's more of us popping up that do this like full time to part time. And I know most of them cause there's not many of us. Yeah. And, um, it's, it is, they're profession. We're professionals for a reason. Like there's a difference between like, see, you know, I just lost my train of thought. No, I don't know where we're going. I get you. Like, oh, oh, like just the, but it's hard for me to like, I don't just read a template and marry you. Now some couples do want that. Like, which just shocks me when you're putting so much, you could probably say the same for videography couples that go on this. I wonder they'll go on this, um, They'll spend so much money and put so much effort, but maybe they won't hire a videographer, only a photographer. Mm. For me, it's like, why are you skimping on the ceremony? This is like the, this is a big part of it. Now, all of it's, you know, and I know so many wonderful vendors and all the outlets. So it's not like pick one over the other. I just am surprised sometimes when I get like a random inquiry or someone, if it's like a referral or something, it's already like a good fit, mm, you know, cause they're like, right. Brittany's your girl. I go to her. Yeah. But if it's like a random person, that's just like, will you come marry me in my back? Again, those, I love those right. though. Um, they don't understand. Like they're just not understanding. Well, why do you need to take that much time to like, to, yeah. to like work with me? Can you just show up? Like, can I, can I pay you for the 30 minutes and then leave? It's like, no people, like there's a whole process here. Mm. So that's the part that's still, it's almost though, I feel like because we're a newer vendor, I don't want to say we're newer. It's almost like underrated. I think we have to educate people Yeah, like that. We 
and that we exist. Yeah. That like that's been a thing that I've had to work on. Had to yeah. yeah. Be Even like, you need this because like yeah. there's I, so many weddings I've done right. Yeah. A lot like I've done a lot of ones that like the groomsman or somebody does the officiating. You tell me those stories because I haven't been to as many oh where goodness. I've gotten to see the ceremony. So God bless their souls because they trust their their most you know sometimes you know sacred intimate moment where they're like getting married right yeah this is your person yeah and i'm getting chills talking about it. like this is you know yeah you know what i'm saying like this is your person and they like will make a joke that's like R- too not much. good yeah or, again best man speech don't do best uh-huh. man speech in the ceremony it's yeah. not appropriate or some joke that's a little cringy or something that's like off off kiltered like mm-hmm. for example like i had one officiant that like mentioned some family drama oh, it's like geez. you don't do that not in like, the what ceremony. are you doing ever it was during like the a, day it was crickets oh, crickets so that's that's where like, like all sweating thinking about i know right <laughs> all vendors need to take this into account is like ask like who yeah. has passed away who do we need to be sensitive about who do we need to not mention who do we need to mention like what just like getting to know them is like the whole thing and that yeah. takes time yeah. you know what i mean and that's where the value is i love that point because part of my questionnaire that's a question mm. is like are, well it's just kind of like a vague is there other details i should know but the things yeah. people write in there are like hey we just had so and so pass hey brother was supposed to come and now they're not mm-hmm. really sensitive subject one that i have to really dance with the bride usually most is dad's passed away yeah and they're trying to figure out the walking or uh, vice versa the groom doesn't have his mom to walk him down the aisle yeah um or she's boycotting because dad's gonna be there right there's whatever and you've you've seen lots of examples so those are things that i ask not necessarily because i'm putting in the ceremony but i just want to know um, and then there's also things I touch on, like with loved ones past, sometimes they want to like bring that up in the ceremony. Yeah, exactly. So that's a good one. Like to if ask. they have, you know, those chairs where it's like space yeah. holding and stuff, you want to yeah. maybe have a moment of silence yeah. or yeah. maybe a special prayer or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I definitely think more people need to hire like, yeah. professionals because yeah. the experience is just like, that's another thing about it. Like the yeah. experience side of it. For sure. A lot of people that don't understand like, I've had inquiries that I've, I've turned away because they just, they just want video, right? Yeah. And like, you can pay somebody else for video, but if you want to actually tell like a cohesive story that is authentically you guys, mm-hmm. then we then can talk, we... right? And That's I think... a great way to put it. That's for me too. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's the same, yeah. like you have to, like you have to know them to yeah. create a story that you can tell in front of people and draw them in to have yeah. an experience. That's once in a lifetime. Now did over the course of your career doing has that has that developed like did you start like doing kind of anything just getting weddings under your belt oh for sure yeah yeah like yeah i well i started actually for second shooting yeah i started second shooting uh, for trelawney joy films shout out Woo-hoo! um yeah she's awesome um and then ronnie harris films those are the two i've mm-hmm. done i did like a lot with mm-hmm. and ronnie harris actually sadly closer business town a few years ago oh. i was like oh, she was one of the best filmmakers in the valley like yeah. amazing yeah um but yeah so I, I shot with them quite a few times um and then just slowly you know built up my repertoire of videos and my portfolio and stuff and my first wedding was actually like uh, a covid wedding uh backyard backyard yeah. COVID wedding yeah and it's actually i miss those i mean they're still around but there was a lot more they're what, during yeah, like 20, 2020 2021 yeah i've actually never done a backyard wedding since so mm-hmm. it was kind of a special experience and that, that a great example of like being conscious of <laughs> your excuse i'm just kidding <laughs> i don't get to get a i don't where are my buttons i know right <laughs> my cough button don't worry about it going back to like the experience side of things they her dad this is actually a story I, I tell couples often just to like to highlight the importance of this once in a lifetime experience and i'm like let me know if there's anybody that you really want to have on film mm. because you don't get to have everybody together all at once all the time right, when right? You, especially you have so many guests exactly yeah and some of them might be old or might have illnesses and so i always offer like hey even if, even before the wedding if mm-hmm. you want a message from your grandma like have her mm. have someone record on their iPhone, send it to me, and I'll save it and I'll put it in you the film. You put it somewhere. in the film. Oh, yeah. good. Cool. Or if you know on the wedding, if they are there, something like that, mm-hmm. like I'll pull them aside or like we'll get them dancing, that kind of thing. Yeah. And 
for this wedding specifically, they're like, our dad has cere like cerebral palsy mm -hmm. or something like that, or muscle, some muscle, muscle dystrophy. And he, um, so we mic'd him up, obviously, and um, mic'd him up the whole day. And he was able to amazingly like stand up from his wheelchair mm -hmm. and walk her down the aisle oh, and actually that. bumped up their wedding day to do that because he was yeah. declining so fast. Wow. Uh, and then literally two weeks later, she he ended up uh, passing away. And they came back and they're like, do you have anything that we can yeah. have? And I gave them everything for free. I'm like, here you go. Oh, and so that like, that's, that's the type of experience I want to give to everybody. Not like the sad part, but like the, yeah. the here, here's life. Yeah. Here's like, yeah. here's everything for you guys to remember him. Like I, I yeah. choose to believe that like something after this life, right? Hopefully yeah. that we'll see each other again. Yeah. But until for then. until then, let's yeah. remember him, you know? Yeah. So that's my little tangent. Sorry guys. No, I love it. <laughs> no, but those are the moments that, it, it is it just keeps your heart your soul fed for the next wedding right mm -hmm. like all these little moments that you are so different with every couple yeah I'm trying to think it's of, just like yeah. humanity you know what i mean for sure i love that i don't know why and you're capturing it and you get to yeah i love what you do video i i think i told you i tried to do videography i say tried i'm not amateur but yeah I, I did a couple second shooting for a wedding. Mm -hmm. I bought my, I told you my GH5 yeah, that trying. I'm gonna sell hey, you probably because I, <laughs> I, just, I just don't use it. Um, actually, I feel confident I could do, no, because even like colors and like I didn't, my right. settings, I didn't um, really, that took forever and I still never learned it. But I ended up doing one wedding where it was, it was, can I tell you my horror videography please story? Please do, okay. yes. So I was second shooting um, or I had second shot a few times and I was, I actually started a fishing at that point. So at the mm -hmm. time, and I was doing so many elopements. Yeah. So I would like, I'd be on the trailhead, right? You're not like leaving the trailhead. It's be all caravan together. Yeah. So it started happening is I'd officiate and then I'd whip out my iPhone or my little, I had like a little, um, gimbal, like a, what is that brand? The DJI? Yeah. Yeah. Had the tiny one. Nice. And so I would just start shooting and that was amazing, especially because it was a fun couple. You just kissy, dancey, like mm -hmm. just the couple. So I started doing that and then just for fun, I would start editing and send that to them. Like they wouldn't pay for it. It wouldn't That's be kind. part. So I, and then I, I was like, I want to see if I want to do this more. Mm -hmm. So then I set a second shot for a couple weddings and then one of my family members or friends of family got married. I was very transparent with them. I'm super green. Let me do this. Cause they were on that fence of even hiring one. Right. It was kind of, so I gave them, I charged them not very much, but it was a shit show. I had like my friend who was a very good videographer be my second shooter. He bailed like <gasps> two weeks before. No. And then I ended up hiring a very good videographer that I paid four times the amount I made for the wedding. And then um, and he was there helping me like, that was my like first seven hour, like, you a know, wedding day. at a venue full day. Yeah. Cause again, I'm used to elopements where you're there for like three to four hours. Yeah. So that was already like, holy crap, this is like a marathon. <laughs> so that was already like, whoa, those are the, like honor to you who, you know, <laughs> shout out to you who do, does that regularly. Yeah. And then the editing was like, I had my just, What'd you, you know, use? Well, I used Adobe Premiere, but I had my, A, it was buying like enough of the, I think I had to go like the prep for the wedding. I ended up rent, renting mics, okay, like from Tempe Camera, right? Yeah. And then I had, so I, I spent so much money on that wedding just to like pay people properly yeah. and to have the right setup, buy enough SD cards because I didn't have the it's right so SD expensive. cards. Like just learning, Stick. getting like a little <laughs> inside to your world. Yeah. Never, 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 never. <laughs> That's why I'm so grateful that people hire you and you do what you do and you, um, people need to hire you. you professionals. Again, anyone that's wanting to, well, if they're listening to this, they probably, probably. have used you and love you and see yeah. that pay a good videographer because they're an expert in this field. Yes. Similarly. But trying to do it themselves. Same thing. It's like, they're just like editing. I liked editing though. If I could, it's like, it's just the whole thing. Like if I could just second shoot, cool. If I could just mm. edit, no editing's a monster. But <laughs> anyways, so I did like so many iterations, my, my laptop, cause I had a laptop, not even like a full right. setup. So it kept crashing. And then I finally like, and I, and it was so, it was six months later I was uploading the whole foot, everything oh, got, no. um, 
what is it called? Corrupted. Oh, you're kidding. Everything. What? And then it was so late at that point, my second shooter didn't have his stuff back no up. No backup. Oh, so I put it away. I asked if I could give them their money back. They were so wonderful. They're like, Britt, it's okay. Like, I sent them what raw footage I had. Yeah. Like, on another card, like yeah. up, my backup cards. And I was mortified. I waited six months. I said, let me just send someone. Let me hire someone. Let me send someone this. Because it was like yeah. six months of trauma. So I had to wait a while. Oh, man. And I, they had put it to rest. I'm like, no, I still want to do this for them. Yeah. And so then I hired someone and she did so good. She did, she did like a three minute video of what I had. She got them something and they loved it. Oh, now perfect. I looked at Saved. it. It was beautiful. Yeah. But I knew all the great shots I had that oh, ne they imagine? never saw it. Yeah. So, and again, I know you, the more you do it, like anything, the better yeah. you get. You have backups. You know how to not corrupt a file. Don't open Adobe over and over again in the same project. I didn't oh know that. Oh my gosh. So, anyways, Adobe. I, those days. But I still love the process of video. Like, I just, I don't know, like oh, watching really it. Cool. And yeah. yeah. You want to hear my horror story? Yeah, tell me your horror story. So uh, my horror story is actually not my own. <laughs> that was so good. You, you have to share. But I won't name names, obviously. But okay, so me and my buddy, filmmakers, and we shoot stuff together all the time. Uh, different businesses, of course. And um, he shot a gorgeous wedding um, on the coast somewhere. Some, some awesome elopement, something. Yeah. And um, we were meeting just to like have coffee and chat yeah. and maybe like I think we we're transferring some footage and stuff <laughs> oh no and literally as he walked in the Starbucks he dropped his mm. HDD so not an SDD not okay you know yeah yeah you know what I mean the, the, difference. the bigger the spinning disc one yeah that can be damaged okay dropped it plugged it in and he couldn't access any of the files and he didn't have a backup yeah and I was like and he had three weddings on there I remember that just now <gasps> three full weddings on there yeah. So I think two of the weddings he found a backup for. Okay. That one The wedding. one that was like an exotic location. Yeah. That was. He, so he sent it to the data doctor, spent like $1,500 to try and recover it. Recovered like a 720 format. Okay. So like recovered most of it, but okay. really low resolution. Okay. And then he used AI. Thank goodness that AI was like coming about at the same time. Yeah. And he upscaled it to 1080p. Wow. Like he, but it took hours and yeah. hours and hours and he almost and he spent so much to and it, do it was, that right? it was like yeah. a year over yeah because it took so much time to, to develop and everything yeah but he ended up getting a a good film to them and i was like dude yeah you have to back up every time yeah. so like me i have the double sd cards okay. one terabyte for each right yep. amazing i, I learned it. 15 hours there. yeah <laughs> of footage yeah. um and then go on the it goes on the editing drive. It goes on two of my backup drives, and then it goes on to uh, Backblaze, so that it's in the cloud as well. So it's like everywhere. I'm so paranoid. Sometimes I've had nightmares, literal night terrors yeah. of like losing footage. Oh, I'm sure. So, yeah, I'm still working on that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just just the anxiety of it. Is oh yeah, awful. Oh gosh, <laughs> and and you learn by unfortunately having experiences, oh, sure. right? Yeah, because you. You think, okay, I'm all prepared, and then yeah, I mean, I've lost audio, happened. yeah, like all the, like, that happens all the time yeah. because like ceremony audio, yeah. yeah, that's why we have backups upon backups. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to use either on camera or one of the other microphones to get stuff because yeah, if you have one, it's just yeah. I've liable. thought of for myself, I'll have to ask you, like not from the videographer that the couple hires, but just for me, yeah, I wanted to kind of start recording myself, like hide it, hide them like in the yeah. flower arrangement by the altar. Or something. That'd be super good. So I need to ask you, I don't know if these ones are. So these ones are pretty big for yeah. what you probably want to do. Um, I would probably suggest doing. Cause I have those a... tiny road mics that like go on your. Yeah. Like, yeah. But see, but that one you have to I'm... have a receiver. And a... Yeah. yeah. I don't like those very yeah. much. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. Well, I'm, those are for amateurs anyway. Well, I don't think so. Because they're easy. There's, no? there's plenty of videographers yeah, that yeah. use it, professional yeah. videographers. And they have great quality stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing I've experienced with them from one of my buddies actually filming mm -hmm. with him is that if there is any interference mm -hmm. or like anything walking in front of it, like mm -hmm. like metal and stuff, it'll break the audio up, oh, no. which is super weird. So I oh, always I always record internal, like those labs that yeah. I think you wore one and then yeah. uh, Omar had the other. 
and then hide those somewhere. Yeah. See, those are super easy to hide. Just some yeah, skin just put them right in. here. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how I be. That's how I get to know every what videographer. They get to cop a feel. Cop a Hi, feel. Hi, Brittany. I'm the videographer. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Don't, Don't mind me. Don't mind me. <laughs> Just sticking that's, how, that's always my intro to a videographer Literally. photographer i usually walk in and they're like you know just finished their first look or something and yeah. i obviously know who they are because they have a big camera in their hand you guys are the ones like running around yeah we're doing like, all your mic checks stands like, wait <laughs> mics. Can, can you can i get through your armpit <laughs> yep. even that i've tried to it, i can't control my wardrobe that much but i have gotten better at like i try to get dresses with with pockets, pockets. Ooh, that's nice. um I love pockets. That's I like helpful. I like Thank slacks, you. you know. I try. <laughs> but um or things that go maybe even a little higher up so that the mic's kind of mm. hiding under my hair. Yeah, yeah. So I figured out little things, but yeah, I don't really I try to match them first and foremost, yeah, like their absolutely. color scheme. Oh my gosh. But I have noticed that's a horror story. I, <gasps> I wanna wear if I could, Evan, goodness. before you tell me. Okay, I'm sorry. I no, I wish I could wear bright red. Because I love I'd love yeah, to rock like a hot like hot pink, hot pink, red. bright red, yeah. but it just would not work. Hot pink Dang. might work if they have pink in there. True, like flowers. Florals. But go ahead. I didn't want to no, hope you didn't lose your thought. No, I got it. Okay, um, go. It's wardrobe based. <laughs> okay. So it was at the Paseo, and shout out to Paseo, one of my favorite venues. They're so good. I just yeah. I'm professional now. It was my early days, so forgive me. <laughs> you but say it's so good I, too. I wore a white t-shirt. Okay. And so jeans. sweaty to this black tie event. Oh no. So I was the only other person wearing white yeah. than the other than the bride. Yeah. It was really bad. And glad I'm so glad that they were but, like okay with it and they were chill. But I was like wearing a ball cap. I looked yeah. like I was gonna be on like a, a set for twelve days. Yeah. Like behind the scenes. So I wanna ask you, because obviously it bothered you from saying it. Like I for me, it. if if that was me in my wedding, I wouldn't care. Really? I'd want you to be no, I'd want you to be comfortable because you're moving around. Yeah. And again, because I've done it a little bit. So I, you're squatting, you're, you're hovering, you're sweating. <laughs> um, you want your arms to be immobile. Yeah. Like you got to do, what's the fun pan walk? Like where you don't oh, move your the, upper body? The, yeah, the ninja walk. The ninja walk. The, you got to be able, you got to. leg, the leg. You have to have down. a bridge of motion. So I'm laughing because I would just like wear what you want. But yeah. what do you, I would like to know that. Then what do you, how do you decide what to wear? How have you figured that out? Yeah, so. I, of course, it's always in the questionnaire. I always like to ask the okay. couple or the venue because actually yeah. there's a wedding that I'm filming next this month at the end of the month mm -hmm. that is very particular on what the vendors wear. And so they say uh, all black, yeah. all vendors, all black. So that one, obviously, it's going to be all I black. I didn't even think of that. Like, it's not even the couple. It's the venue yeah. that has a Sometimes requirement. Some, it's very rare that venues will have any type of, like, restrictions on that. Mm -hmm. But this one did. So, but if it's not that, um, I like to ask what the, like the colors are, mm -hmm. tried my best to match it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I've been really into this old money look. Ooh. So, you know, like this kind of like sweater knit stuff. I nice did slacks, notice it. Yeah. Kind of stuff. I don't have a watch on today, but like usually a gold watch yeah. or something just to spruce it up a little bit. Looks yeah. a little nice. Old money. I like little, it. Little, yeah. Little like kind of Mad Men sixties. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know. The, the style that never dies. Yeah, for like sure. I just got Classic. Like a yeah, there you go. And then you're nice and cool. True. It in is the very summer. Nice, well, so. even when it's a beautiful time of year, you're moving so yeah, much. We're still sweating. And you're in the. the I sweat if you have lights. So easily. Yeah. I don't know why I keep saying sweaty because I I would be mortified like yeah. if you know shooting or um to like have the pit stains that go all the right. way down. Like I'd always have to wear. Actually, even with with i Standing have had that yeah. i have had that with officiating where i wear like a short oh, sleeve and i'm like and just like because like there's no way i want my armpit stuff to show in yeah. there and that, video at least you can kind of hide it a little yeah. bit as you're standing there yeah but yeah yeah I can even imagine. that knock on wood. now that i'm talking right. about i'm to myself it's i've never happen. had i have thought like i need to like bring an extra dress in the car or anything like oh, in case smart. in case i like oh, there's like splash arm, something arm on me on the pads. way there yep armpit like... pads i don't really have like an emergency kit i'm trying to think for officiating yeah i always have tissue for everybody that's very like, i think i remember group. you whipping yeah. some out at, yep. yeah 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 even for mom nice. usually it's for mom or parents more yeah. uh, like right before like when we're doing a lineup yeah and we're gonna walk down the aisle like, here mom Here's a question then. Yeah. So this is a service industry. It's all about the experience. 
Yep. And it seems like you do a lot of little things. You mm-hmm. don't have to tell everything, obviously. But yep. what are some things that you see are like different or that you like to do to just help the yeah. couple and like really be there for them? Yeah. No, it's a good question. And I don't mind sharing because I think people need to do it more. Yeah. Um, it. So when I talked about like being a host, it's thinking of that. So one thing that first came to mind because I couldn't believe no one else was doing it mm. was uh, elopements outside and no one's bringing the family water. Um, no one thought to bring water. You know, you you have like the couple who's from Arizona, yeah, and then you have the family from like freaking Minnesota, yeah, they're all dying, and they've never been in the desert, and no one's brought them water. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm like, oh, amateur move. And how did I yeah. learn? Because I shared my water. Then the next weddings, I started bringing. So again, here I am, have my little ceremony bag with my signature pad for the license mm-hmm. and my ceremony script and then i have a like 12 bottles of water in my other that's sack so, so i'm hiking it up that's yeah. one thing for like adventure elopements or elopements outside i'm trying to think of like like a venue more traditional like you bring tissues which is awesome tissue little things for the so more often i find than the actual couple being nervous are the wedding party Oh, like really? Yeah. And it's usually because they want to, like, if they have a task, like a ring bearer. Oh, right. Or a best man that's giving the rings. Yeah. Uh, and I give, like, bridesmaids things, like, like I don't know what word, zhuzh, her dress, like, fluff it when she gets up zhuzh. there. Zhuzh. Is that French? I think I just heard it, and I, I don't think it's a real word. Okay. Fluff. It sounded very fancy. Zhuzh. I would love, <laughs> I should know. I'm actually learning French on Duolingo right Are now. Are you? I'm learning French too. We should, we should, should team up. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, we know. I've been doing it five minutes a day for like two years, so oh, I should know more. Shoot. But I would love to practice because cool. I can, I'm better at like listening and I could hear. Right. I don't think I could converse with anyone because you're just doing it yeah. on your phone. Um, so yeah, I'm so totally down what to I do like. Is podcast. Okay. I listen to a podcast to just repetition. Yeah. And then I actually do, this is a fun fact about me. Uh, I do a dog sport that's called French ring. Okay. And it's basically, I get it in a bite suit for like police dogs. Okay. And I train them to be like strong so that they can like do their work. And um, it's super fun. It's adrenaline so dump. You're, so you're a biker too, cyclist. Biker. Was that what you said? No, so it's in a bite suit. Oh, a it's bite. A, oh, like a bite that, suit. Like a bite, I so, heard, bite like, suit. Oh those, yeah, yeah. Those are bites Yeah. from dogs. Yeah. But. So, but that's originated from France. And so I'm like, I, I need, I'm going to learn French because I want to go next year to actually watch the championships. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hopefully going to do it. We'll see. That's amazing. But. Why don't you go and we'll sell a package and we'll officiate a oh wedding. Oh my gosh. That's so, so genius. You know what I started doing is following everywhere that I want to travel and officiate. Okay. Um, I started researching like. Americans that want to elope in France mm. started following and talking to these event coordinators. That's I'm super Brittany. smart. Yeah, because I learned if I want to officiate in um, most French couples would not hire an American, right? No, but Americans right. would hire an American to fly for them. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's the way I'm going. Wow. I'm, but yeah, I'm gonna, I might still have them and yeah. start following people. There you go. Because yeah, I would love to. I actually yeah. follow. There's one photographer. Her name escapes me. I'm sorry. Yeah. But she does amazing work, and mostly in like France, Paris, that like yeah. area. Um, but she's American. And yeah. I'm like, how, and they're all French people too. So I'm like, yeah. how did you? Yeah. How did you get there? I started geeking out because again, like starting on the adventure elopement site, I started meeting all these like full time videographer photographers that travel all year. Yeah. And so I was like, how do they do this? Yeah. And so I started asking them and then I started researching. So stylized shoots are huge, right? Yes. And yes. so I've even tried, I've met really cool people. Um, I know it's hard, like I'm not remembering their name when I need it on this podcast. Um, Sorry, well, if we think about um, it. There's a great one. She's Minnesota. She lives in Minnesota, but she's South African. Oh, And she was doing a stylized shoot in San Diego where I frequent and I really wanted to do like elopements at like La Jolla Coves and Mm, Sunset Cliffs. That's like on my bucket list to get out there more. And I've taken stuff of me like standing out there that I could put on Instagram and hashtag, but I don't have like me officiating out there. Mm. But anyways, she was like, doing one she had set it up but she didn't get 
uh, she didn't get enough couples oh, so to do it. So she's down. like, cause that, so, yeah. but I met her. So it's cool. Like I'll start following people that I think I can collaborate with. Yeah. There was one that never came to fruition. So my hometown in New Mexico, have you heard of white sands, New Mexico? Like the white sand. Oh, your, like yes, yes, yes. Kind of looks like the sand dunes in California, but it's yeah. white. So White Sands National Park. Sorry, it's not White Sands, New Mexico, but uh, Las Cruces is where I'm from, and it's like 30 minutes away. Oh. So when we were young, we'd go out there, and we didn't have snow, so that was our sledding. Oh, you go well, out fine. when it's nice weather, and you go down the sand dunes. Yeah. But I would just, I started following, you know, White Sands National Park, like oh, okay. weddings. Yeah. So I had like done a whole thing, went on like a New Mexico wedding collective, found a photographer. We planned the outfits, like the different Style, styles, three, stuff. three, three couples, three. And wow. she got freaking COVID right before. Oh, we shoot. even had couples like, it was like a whole. That sucks. Yeah. So mm. it's like, but the universe just, it'll work out. That's so, true. Yeah. yeah. I like those ideas. Maybe we should do something together. Yeah. The, uh, I sure. tried to put together a funny like a dune styled shoot yeah for in the dunes yeah and the the models bailed on me and i was like okay okay i want to ask you this because i'm still learning these groups too like facebook groups for the vendors specific i've seen both where you're giving like a free boa to the couple so they get some shots sure and you because you're you're doing it for your marketing so you're already paying for the but then I've also seen couples who cool if you get this gig that are like perfect, like they're almost do this so much that they're in all these stylized shoots and they make you pay for them to be in your shop. Yeah. I'm like, first of all, cool to me. That's like right. totally kind of backwards in my brain, I know. but it's like awesome for them. Yeah. There's but a few couples that I know. I don't know. Maybe not backwards. I don't know. It just seems like it'd be the all like, for an energy exchange, like I feel like it right. should be backwards, like that you shouldn't, as a videographer, photographer, shouldn't have to pay the models. Yeah. I don't know. You'd think, right? I'd think that, that, like, I think it just depends on how popular the couple is. Cause there's another, there's that makes couple, sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's one couple that, and I if know. they're professional models that exactly. do it, I get that too. Yeah. I think I'm more probably used to like, like random couples mid, that are yeah. just like wanting, just getting started. I've never or, ever done yeah, a shoot together. Exactly. I guess that's what I'm thinking of yeah. more than the professional. I yeah, think. like I, I'll offer. I've done this a couple times to. I'm off mic. I've done that a couple times to, like people. And this is kind of silly. People have like wedding party guests. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I go up to them. I'm like, you guys are super cute. Follow me on Instagram. Like we should do something together. They that's never brilliant. Really, they never actually like follow Does it up ever? with that. No. But I try a couple times just to see if it goes right because sometimes at the wedding party there's some gorgeous people like couples. So. Again, my brain pings everywhere, Evan. So I hope I haven't been too all over the place. Great. As soon as you said it, my brain flash. It was flash. <laughs> Millennium Hotel, the McCormick mm. McCormick Ranch Resort. Um, Have you been there one? McCormick. Yeah, Anyways, um, kind of off like Indian Bend and McCormick Ranch area. Anyways, okay. so cool venue. <laughs> We're like over, you know, it's over like the little okay. pond and there's water and there yeah. was a couple and I fell in love with them and I started I tried to like I should have just actually said I'm sorry like can you walk over here I need to capture this they each had they were standing in front of me in the um I like to give myself a cocktail sometimes at the sure. you know when I finish I, my, I clocked out yeah I, uh, I signed the license <laughs> so I'm at the bar um we're waiting in line at a cocktail hour and they were in front of me and they each had one earring on and they were like next to each other. So yeah. like she had the right ear, he had the left ear yeah. and they were, and then they had like, they were just so hip coordinated. Like, yeah. They were just like, I don't know, hipster. Hair? He had the man bun. Was it black curly hair? No, that okay, been amazing. I know the certain couple that oh, okay. they do the same thing oh, Okay. with like that full, it's like an ear piece. That almost, is right? so cool. And they look really cool. Yeah. But some people like think how corny them. that is. I love. It. I did take like <laughs> photos on my. I think I did like a story about it, and they took photos on my camera. Oh, that's fun. But it was that one was yeah. Oh, I bet there's some that you see though that are yeah. just like. There's some people that are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I like that's, that idea though. Yeah, I think that's a good idea really... to like ask them, like kind of do a pitch, but even in it's a very cool way. Like, hey, no, like let's do something. Yeah. You guys are so cute. It's better. It's it's, it's hit or miss, but it's yeah. it's probably. I mean, it's more economical. Yeah. But then you also know that if you pay those people to model for you, yeah. 
they're going to be there. They're not going to like ditch. I'll, there's so many times that I've tried to put together like yep. styled shoots mm -hmm. for just myself and like a couple yeah. that they're like, yeah, we've decided that we don't really need the adventure session. I'm like, okay, totally fine. Yeah. Nowadays, I actually am offering it basically in every package. Okay. Um, now tell like, me, because I, I cause did. it's so worth it. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, because uh, I went and looked at more of your stuff because I saw the, it was one where they were in water. No like holding here was really cool so mm, what's yeah. an adventure is that like an engagement shoot or not yeah. what's the difference so or like, tell me yeah i like yeah. to call it adventure session because engagement yeah. session i i my own description of it is like yeah. um capturing either like the engagement because mm -hmm. i've had inquiries for people that want like oh do you do like surprise engagement video yeah and then or like something before the wedding. Yeah. And it, I not I don't necessarily want to have a time limit on when we do the adventure session because sometimes it's just not the right weather. Mm -hmm. So I just say adventure session instead of engagement session because it can be okay. before or after. That's okay. whenever. Cool. You know? Whenever the time limit. Yeah, works. and it's usually about three hours. We'll get audio too, so that it kind of takes the pressure off of the day of. And I usually always like to, outside somewhere. Yeah, the, always in, outside. Yeah, somewhere that's why it's beautiful. adventure. Yeah, that's so adventure. cool. And we can do it. Yeah, anything. It could be a, at the lake. It could be in a boat it could be like literally mm -hmm. anywhere which is super cool but so tell me about the workshop that you're working on and that yeah. you're you're doing because yeah. i think my brain's not connecting the idea quite yeah. yet yeah. what does that look like so in... what i want what my goal my vision yes. for it is so because i let me back, pull back like you with your adventure sessions yes. something that organically started happening with mm. my couples was um i had three couples that hired another officiant but they wanted me to do a personal like vow session mm, and they i didn't market these they just happened okay. or i think two of them were like hired someone else and then one of them was a friend that did private vows before they did like a repeat after me vow so it was like oh. before the wedding and then we went out into the ceremony gotcha um so oh, we did like, like we did that. like a foot washing, which is one of my if anyone listening, please let me do it for you because um, <laughs> it's Christian based. But I think it's just beautiful. The foot mm -hmm. washing. Yeah. I'm um, so I did that like with just them. So special. It was just me, them and the photographer, videographer. And then um, the ones at the home I did, I just called them private vow ceremonies. I have no idea what else to call it. It was them right telling them their vows. This was before they like flew out to another state to do their big wedding. Wow. And they just, it we we kind of did a clearing too. Ooh. Like a smudge. Yeah. Here's what I'm excited for. I didn't, I, it was very, and then the second couple, they like verbally wrote and spoke of what they want to let go of with each other. Whoa. So they, I call them like couples clearing sessions on my website yeah. and then private vow ceremonies. So anyways. I really those started like happening that. yeah and i was like oh god i want to do more of these so how do i like put them in a package yes so that's still let's video coming that. up yeah that's yeah. cool so i think i on my my most robust package mm -hmm. i do have that in there gotcha um i just call it a private vow ceremony yeah and that can be before or after it could be like before they go. i think it depends on if like What's really great for it is if they are eloping and we're about to, or if we're just doing an adventure wedding and we're going about to hike out. Yeah. That's a really good time to do it. Like before you hike and do the ceremony. Oh, yeah. um, I, so, but going back to workshops. So how to be with couples more in that type of energy? Like how do I do this? So because of my yoga background, I've taught meditation forever, yoga nidra, um, I actually prior to officiating, so I've been a yoga teacher for 10 years, like at studios and stuff. Yeah. But I also had my, my own business, you know, trial and error businesses mm -hmm. until officiating just clicked, but I was doing corporate wellness. So I did like packages and offices. Um, and I had like some good accounts, like where I'd go in and I'd stretch the, their employees in a chair and do mm -hmm. breath work with them and stuff. Yeah. So, cool. um, so here I am like full circling doing it with the couple. Right. Uh, so, so I was like, well, I have all this 
you know, in my toolbox, I want to do this with couples because I started doing some during the ceremony. I had one couple, they knew I was a yogi and they had me do a whole heart chakra meditation in their ceremony. It was so freaking cool. Now, again, I make it fit the timing. I can't do it for five minutes while there's people watching. You just, you have to move it, alter it. But when I get asked for those things and I did one, it was at the Paseo. (sighs) was so cool because here's this gorgeous venue a lot of people it got quiet talk about commanding a room when there's that many people was one of the coolest freaking moments i can remember in my career yeah um and i did a smudging ceremony around them and i just lit the so saging for those of you listening that don't know sage you light it you clear it so i walked around them um i did a blessing over them and it was so cool so oh my goodness um so yeah i'm trying to well i'm doing it right now it's every other month okay um so what does that look like does it just yeah. couple just two like the couple it's, and you is it a group of people sorry i know i didn't it, like bring that together very yeah, well where, where is it at where like, is that okay yeah they're I'm so excited they're month about. they're bi-monthly workshops right now okay. and they will be monthly okay where couples any couple married engaged it's complicated can okay. come <laughs> oh, and I am every month is a different facilitator typically mm. it's health and wellness like sound healer meditation mm-hmm. just because just because I know so many great people in that industry yeah. doing yoga for 10 years out here in the Phoenix community is insane the healers out here yeah um, and I think it's powerful to have couples try that stuff together yeah. Um. But uh, like one that's coming up and I don't have a date yet or it is a pottery class together. Ooh, so that's fun. my goal is to have under my officiating by Brittany, um, it's going to be a whole like umbrella company of like, here's the monthly schedule. Here's mm. the offerings you have for and you have like a, a date package. night. Not even just package. Or they just, just pay one by one. one, by one. Oh. Yeah. And why I actually, so I was, it, it transpired into that because I was doing those one-on-one sessions. Yeah. Um, so I'd offer those two. Sorry. I offer okay. like, you can just do a private vow ceremony or have me come and do yoga with you. Okay. Like that's on my website, but nice. um, it's like doing that in a group setting. Yeah. So like I did one two months ago or no last month and it was, I called it a play, um, play night or no, I didn't call it a play night. Just like when I do wedding ceremonies, yeah. the name and stuff comes to me as I as you put go. together yeah. the, what the event is. So one night we did a harmonic healing date night, and that was a sound healer. Mm. Then we had wine, and we did romance pods. Ooh. So after they decompressed, and we had chocolate and wine, and they got to like be in their sections of the beautiful courtyard we were at. Mm. Um, and they got to cuddle with blankets, and I had... I have these fun, like, you know, adventure challenge card decks and different things that mm. I, I geek out on everything romance and my algorithm on social media. Just... So I have every <laughs> product, like, <laughs> like a, a sexy candle massage that you're going to pour on your partner yeah. to like a psychotherapy. Let's do this book mm. together and, you know, like do couples therapy. That's much more yeah. robust in that way to like, let's go do yoga together. So the goal is to have all these types of offerings in one resource. Yeah. And then what's fun for me is I get to see couples again. Yeah, of course. That because like, you know, with the texting, it's like I get so sad when I never get to see them again, you know, and some couples have become my friends and I get to still talk to a lot. So like to see them at a workshop later is like the best feeling. Um, And then it was a marketing thing, too, of like I can meet couples that once if they're engaged True. or not married yet they can hire me later yeah so it was my way of doing all the things that i can do making a full-time you know when wedding season is not going mm. in phoenix but really i've just gotten to see so many couples and all kinds of stories yeah that i think um just them taking time together Like all these things before a couple has to go to like, like I'm all for therapy. I've done therapy, but like to go into like couples therapy, I think there's a lot. Now, if you're doing it as like a preventative or like a check-in, it's one thing, but like, hey, we're about to divorce. I need this status. 
I think there's so many things you can do to prevent. help prevent that. Yeah. And so that's really what I want to create with these workshops. Okay. So these workshops. Sorry, there's so many things no, I, I just it. said. It's basically, tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's like quality time yes. with like a purpose for every yes every session. Yeah, and they're all different. Or uh, on, on their own. Oh, sorry, singles. always for a group, the workshops. Gotcha. The one-on-one -on -one stuff, sorry, is if they want to do private vow stuff with okay. me. Okay, yeah. just private vows yeah. is one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And the group stuff is like, it's not group therapy, but it's kind yeah. of like healing in a way. Yeah. So one, so every other, every month, so one month could be harmonic healing date night was, was the sound healing. Yeah. I love then the pottery that's one, that's not really like a wellness right. healing. So it's more that's of just more quality like, time yeah. So over healing. time, if I can do one a week, I'll have a whole, you can do Buffer all one. of it. You know, oh, I you like can that. do the deep one. You can do the it's almost bouncy like, light one. It's like planning. It's like planning date nights for couples. Yes. That's, that's it. genius. That's it. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Okay. Actually, you just struck gold because like, yeah. you know how many times I run into couples that are just like, yeah, we're just working constantly. Like we never have time to go on a date that's night That's exactly anything. what I'm trying <gasps> to do. And what I love about it, Evan, Chills. is what I love about it is because me, again, just me by myself, I follow all these amazing people. Yeah. These therapists, I, I have like a whole list of like couples therapy books. I have a whole list of sound healers and yoga teachers. Yeah. Um, I have like products. Like I met, this is again, divine intervention happening. Um, I was at my unity church and I was talking to this couple. This woman, I start talking to this couple. They have a whole, um, they don't, they don't sell it anymore or I would be talking about it they had in their past written a whole series of date night books and one was this is a cool idea um where the date nights were you took turns as the husband and wife hmm. you alternated and you got to you had to plan the date and all you could tell your partner was what type of outfit to wear oh, and what time what day and time you were going yeah so that they blocked it off yeah. But the whole point of this book was to give their partner ideas of like how to do mm. it, but almost like secretly. Right. So you never, and you had to do it. It didn't matter. Like you have to, you put in your calendar. You don't get to say, oh God, it was a heavy week. Right. No, it's, like, it's nope, on the you calendar. Gotta go. You got to go. Oh, I like that. So yeah. 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 That's yeah. A great but idea. yeah, that's the. The overarch, the overarch and then my podcast is going to start coming and that's me just i want to share these stories mm. and i want i've learned so much in relationships doing this because mm. um i've gotten to marry people from like or see the development of a relationship from like 18 like barely just turned 18 yeah. year olds wow. to 75 i think my oldest i remember him oh his name was tom Tom and Sherry. Sherry still messages me. Oh, all her, like, she does the Etsy art. And yeah, she looks yeah. like, oh, I'm having an art show. But she lives in Prescott. Oh, and, wow. and I'm like, Sherry, I love you, but I'm not coming oh, to Prescott literally. tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my God. But um, I don't know, being like a library or something cute, like, just, yeah. yeah. But, anyways, Tom was 80, like, 82. Like, wow. hat, bolo tie. Yeah. Third marriage. Whoa. You know? And then um, Sherry was a little younger, really. He wanted to do it for her, but he was like a super good sport and was super into it. Yeah. Um, you know, you've heard some of those, like, I'm doing this big wedding for her. Right. But then yeah. they're kind of like, no, he was super into it. And like met while they were married to other people stories. Mm. Like my favorite, I want to say I have a favorite. There's so many good ones. Uh. I love the one <laughs> where they like knew each other or even dated young, went yeah. off and had time apart and then came like, back and then came back together. oh my god those are like those are so cute. cute but with that as a romantic as i am like my cinderella is dead in a good way like i don't believe in soulmates oh interesting i believe you choose your partner i believe that god could have anyone for us i believe god could have many partners that would benefit us mm. and that we could create really beautiful lives together and be compatible with. But I think the true bond of soulmate is developed. Mm. And that's what I want. That's what my podcast is going to be about. Mm. So I have all these things going on, Evan. I'm trying name. to, 
Dynamics on Love, Dynamics and it's launching in August. Okay, August. We'll let everybody so, know that. Yeah, um, and it's so going to be the link to it and everything. It's going to be me we'll... talking about all these things I've witnessed, and then the couple, some of the couples I've married are coming on. Oh, actually, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And so we'll talk about like my process, like I'm talking about with you, like yeah. oh, when you asked me this, and oh god, this was uncomfortable, but we loved it, Brittany. That's like stuff I want to highlight because Evan is a you as a digital creator. I'm sure this. I don't know if it gets easier for you to do for your own business. I just keep, I'm having a really hard time showing what I do, so I'm just trying to like that's, get that's it on video. Way okay, to do it, yeah. Okay, I even yeah. There's there's yeah. times that officiants will be like, hey, like you should send me some some video and stuff. Yeah, and I I always send vendors. Yeah, you sent me like one. I'll send Thank vendors you. everything I can. Yeah, that I like anything that, but it's sometimes it's hard to like send out specific edits and stuff to people. Oh yeah. And it's like, I try, I try really hard to yeah. get like everybody their stuff. Well, even but. like you, I appreciate you. Cause before I even asked you to send me what you had for Julian's, yeah. you put me a lot in their ceremony, way more than some couples, videographers. And this is not poo pooing the videographer. You have so much you need to get in there. And maybe I like had a weird horse voice that day or something. And you didn't want me in the audio, <laughs> but some it's like, I'm hardly in some of the videos, right? I'm in a lot. That's I've gotten a lot of typical, great galleries. Yeah. A lot of great, but then again, if it's like, well, Brittany, here's 10 efficients and, um, I don't, you know, like, oh, but he, he charges a little less. So like on paper, mm. it's our pictures all kind of look the same, right? So I'm trying to get better at marketing more of the adventure, like local, the, actual it's the actual ceremony part, like, like the, the sand pouring, I'm mm. trying to highlight, pull photos out of galleries that show that part yeah. or me like laughing with them or making the mm -hmm. couple laugh mm -hmm. i'm really being more specific about like which stuff i put out versus like here's me in another efficient moment right because that just doesn't do anything yeah i know. agree people need to get to know you in a different way that's outside of yeah of just the officiating yeah. because you are that's the first thing you, you know you, you're yeah. talking to the person and you need yeah. to know if you guys vibe together yeah so what's a when you're on the call with couples and stuff like yeah. what are the some are there any questions that they like to ask you? Um, Do you get any personal questions ever? I don't really. I know that you asked. I did when I first started, and I don't mm. know if it's because I kind of naturally start talking about myself. Mm. Like, I'm not like, here, I'm Brittany, here's my background. Right. But it just comes up. maybe it's the disarming part is a lot easier for me now on a call because discovery calls, even that, like, gosh, the money thing too, like saying what I charge, that's been a thing I've had to work on. I don't know why there's been a block about that, but I'm, I'm still working on it. Um, I don't even mention the, the money in yeah. the calls. Yeah. I just say, cause like I go Here's over a it on like a website, a hidden website yeah. that has all my pricing. And I'm just like, here it is. This is what it is. So blah, this blah. was pre, like <laughs> I even had want. my workflow of like for them to be able to see that before we talk. Cause sometimes oh. I used to like not yeah. have it go in the right steps where right. they would just get on a call and they would never see any pricing. And then they're like, well, I fell in love with you, but oh my God, I thought it was $200. I'm like, no, yeah. it's not. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, it used to be. Um, uh, what was the question about? Oh, the calls. I try to make it just about getting to know them a nice. little bit. Like I can't, you know, it's like 30 ish minute call. We're not doing as much as we would in a planning session. Yeah. Um, but I really just try to first calm them and just go, Hey, like, tell me about you. What do you guys like? Like a big thing I, I get, um, they usually start just telling me, but the way I prompt is to really understand the type of wedding they're doing too. Hmm. And was that their first choice? Like, for example, Ooh, I might have a couple that, um, because that'll tell me the vibe in that ceremony that I want to do. So for example, oh. um, say they were a couple that started planning for a 20 person wedding. And yeah. then over time it became 150 people. Yeah. That happens a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I'll ask them those things and it's cause I want to know why. And then I'll start understanding like, we're just private people. We don't really host a lot we're introverts so so it's like and you take that and then i take that and i know a i need to calm them probably more yeah or and then i'll and then i get like well first one is religious non-religious tone yeah um i've done this is also a fun thing that's been a blessing i've gotten to 
really research and do. I have done Catholic, Christian, Jewish, under a hippa. That was freaking cool. Cause, and then wow. stomping the glass, like those rituals, yeah. right? Um, I would love to do like an Indian. I mean, Indian ceremonies are like so three cool. days in there. The only thing I got to do was the bride had a, I'm blanking on the name. It's not henna. It's like called something with yeah, Mendy or like something. Henna. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so any rituals I can do culturally. One was cool. It was Polish. And we do, they take two shots of vodka. One's vodka, one's water. Yeah. And then they eat bread. That was a cool one. That's really cool. Um, so I get to learn about culture because my ideal client will, will want to incorporate the rituals and the yeah. symbolism. One beautiful one was like a blanket ceremony where I, um, like the mothers came up and put, this is a native ceremony. They were not native, but they incorporated it because we were in Sedona Yeah. and they bought this like authentically made blanket and we put it over them That's and their cute. moms. But sorry. So in a discovery call, I'm kind of trying to ask them what they would want. So um, private vows or personal like repeat after me vows or right. personal vows is my top question. Um, religious, non-religious, location, right? Um, but yeah, and then I just kind of, they, they kind of ask me personal questions, but I really just talk about my process about like the questionnaire and getting to right. know them. So it's pretty straightforward now. Interesting. So for your, but, for all your potential, your new clients that are watching this video right now, yay. Right? Yeah. Tell, tell me a little, cause we didn't even touch on this. We just talked yeah. mostly about your business. Tell me a little but, bit about just you. Like yeah. what do you like to do other than your multiple businesses right. and, um, how are you and your boyfriend doing and, or fiance or boyfriend? Is it? He's, we're not officially partners. engaged, but we are, I call him my partner. We are, Same. he's the one we're having babies. I'm already planning. It's Same. funny. So Matt is his name and he's very opposite of me. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And he's taught <laughs> me a lot. I'm the Aquarian extrovert mm. hippie. <laughs> I'm not really hippie. I'm a, I'm a mixture. Hybrid. Yeah. Hybrid hippie. He is, we actually met at a shooting range oh. and that's where I started videography, Evan. Actually at a shooting range. At a shooting range. Cool. I applied for like an admin position. This was, yeah. I, we don't have much time to do all of that I know. background, but basically I was living in Phoenix for 10 years. I moved away for a bad relationship mm. in California. It was a pivotal moment because I do believe why a fishing found me after this relationship and I'll tell you why but I moved back and I was like okay god if you don't want me to be a yoga teacher anymore what do you want me to do because I was doing the corporate you know the corporate wellness in uh, California oh. and that's when COVID hit so yeah. it's like my business that I've been prep working on for 10 years that shut down relationship ended so I moved back so I was like let me just do admin or anything that's fun and mm -hmm. I was like gun range would be cool I'm gonna apply there and I randomly put on my resume videography amateur. Mm. She's like, we need people on our marketing team. Do you want to like learn videography? Sweet. Heck yeah, yeah. You want to pay me to learn videography in a gun range? Yeah. I'll do it. So I met Matt there. And so he works there? He, he worked works? there. Yeah. Oh, so we were coworkers. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. And we worked on different sides of the building. So I didn't yeah. see him much. He was the new guy at the time. Like I had worked there mm. two years when he started. Gotcha. And our story is very cool actually because we didn't just work so we knew each other at work but actually getting together we met out and about randomly so mm -hmm. i remember like who who's the new guy eyes like had the kind matt is so kind he's just kind um and i had a lot of exes that were not so that was like big one mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah. We, we get we go through yeah, the waves exactly and um so uh, but so he calls me on my, but anyway, so yeah. I'm at the range, but we were actually, I was out with coworkers from the shooting range on one of their birthdays. Mm -hmm. And I saw Matt there at the bar we were at in old town. So he wasn't like there with us. Okay. And I was like, Jack guys, encounter. that's, and I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I was like, guys, that's the hot new guy. We are bringing him in to this group right now. Yeah. And I waved him over and and he was there with his roommate, who's one of who's his best friend, one of my best friends now. Um, he was there with Bill, and Bill um, like was going home. And I said, "I got Matt. I'll bring him home." Because I was the DD. No way. So I, I took it. Matt around with us, and and then I was gonna be a, a you know I was gonna be good and let him yeah. like drop you off, and then like bye, bye, and then 
you know, then it goes Mm -hmm. and we started seeing each other from then. But, um, that was just lovely. And we've been together three years and yeah. So that, that was a good one. I love when, like, no, there's nothing against couples meeting online. Yeah. I love when couples meet just in like yeah. real life. Yeah. Like for the first time. Cool it's stories. Just, there's a richness to it. Yep. That's just like ah, refreshing. And, and something I want to bring up when you say that, I've thought of this a lot and I've asked questions for like couples. Cause again, I get to interview couples that meet online versus mm-hmm. in person. The thing with online that I find is that I can see, I'm not saying it applies to every couple. And I've wed a lot of couples I think will last a very long time that I've met online. Yeah. But there's something about the energy of when you're meeting, like versus like a friend, like couples that are friends first. Yeah. And then they be like get together after three, four years. That's such a different energy. It's just a different hmm. it seems like it's just more relaxed in certain ways. Now that's also you can't you can't compare. You can never compare. Yeah. But it's more of like Maybe I'll wed a couple that's been together for like a year and they met online. It's not that they're not close. Yeah. It's just a different depth than maybe mm. like, hey, like you used to be my friend's best friend. And so like, like, you know, like we were, I or dated your connected. roommate. Like I've yeah. had stories like that, like where the girl was dating the guy's roommate. Yeah. And then they didn't work out, but they were friends for four years. And then down the road, they date. So like there, you just learn each other in different roles, I think, or I don't even want to say roles. You can see each other in like different scenarios. Yes. And then you're like, and I think that changes, I'm not going to say better or worse necessarily. Just, I think that changes the, I think that helps you fall in love with, this is how I say it, the person instead of an idea of them. Mm. And I believe as I'm, I'm trying with all of this, right? These workshops and this podcast and what I do, it's like I'm trying to find the answer to like long lasting, lovely love. Hmm. And oh, love there's not an answer, but I do think there's some ways that we need to navigate together. And I think that's one of those is like, like, I don't know how to say it differently. Yeah, I can't get it out, but it's just definitely to your point of the like the stories and how they meet there's just there's all these like little juicy depth. tidbits in there yeah. that i'm like wow you've like you're solid together versus maybe the other love is like newer and bright and like excited yeah. and you're traveling a lot together it's not like one's better than the other it's just different they're very different seasoned Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> like a seasoned relationship versus yes. a brand new yeah. stew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> new stew. I couldn't think of another word. <laughs> Confound <laughs> it. <laughs> Need more coffee. That's perfect. But yeah. So that's cool to witness too. That is really cool. I'm really excited to hear more of your podcast and more yeah. of your, your words. I'm going to see if I can connect you to one of my, sometimes I do uh, stuff for small businesses for videography and stuff. Yeah. Her name is Michelle Graydon cool. and she's a PhD. This mm-hmm. is the, uh, one of the persons I, I mentioned before. And, um, she actually does a hybrid, uh, psychotherapy. So cool. she does Reiki and she does mm-hmm. sound healing plus the psychotherapy all in one. Freaking amazing. Yeah. And from her research, she hasn't seen many people do all three. So she is like, she's legit. She went through the coursework, yeah. Reiki master, sound healer yep. master, uh, super smart lady. Uh, but I, I would wonder if she would come on your podcast or something. And yes. Some and more, I mean, yes. Topics. And I would love to talk to her about being one of the facility co-hosts at these that workshops. Be so cool. Because that's the stuff that couples, I want couples exposed to these offerings mm. and something like that. So I'm Reiki certified. I'm not sound healing certified. Yeah. I know the therapy behind that. And then adding that with the cognitive therapy that she does. That's awesome. So cool. She's a healers. There's a whole, it's like this combo. Like my business coach is mm-hmm. actually, she's an acupuncturist. Oh, But cool. she like her sessions are just another world. So she, we get on her table and she pokes me, but we're talking about everything ahead of time. So yeah. it's almost like, Here's the cognitive like vomit of like everything I'm worried about. Yeah. 
she helps me full circle, which thank you, you did too. I talk in pieces. <laughs> and then um, that's why it's good when I'm in a ceremony because I can just Ooh, zone in. Right. Otherwise, I'm all over the place. But, um, and then acupuncture. Yeah, acupuncture. Thank you. See, <laughs> acupuncture, business coach. She helps me see myself. So then I know, hey, I'm not stuck. I know my next step. So she's great. And every most amazing healers I've done are like a melting pot, which your friend sounds like a melting pot. Yes. Because probably right. stuff she studied, she's done herself on herself. Mm. Right. Because once you start a healing modality, you want to learn another one. Like I would have learned sound healing, but I had to choose Elaine yeah. for a little while. So I would love to meet her. It's funny. Edit that dog out. Can't hear it. But that's awesome. So. Yeah. Um, in closing, are there any like, you know, any th other things you want to plug, you know, or any things you want to, any know, thoughts so you want to leave plugs. us with? <laughs> any good energy, positive vibes? I know. Chocolate, uh, chocolate. So, <laughs> I love it. Reiki, um, for those of you planning a wedding ceremony, know that you have, or just a wedding, I'll say that. Like, look for vendors that light you up, mm -hmm. right? Like, cause they might have something you didn't even know was a thing. That's yeah. something I've learned. Like some people have no idea what goes into a ceremony. So how would they be able to tell me what they need? It's my job to tell them, here's all of the cool things you could do. And um, so explore, don't just think you have to always have this type of vendor or do this type of thing in this type of place. Yeah. That would be advice, I guess. And then a thought to leave you with, Enjoy your love journey. You can't get it wrong. And I do think it's about choosing your partner over and over and over again. Even mm. when you're super compatible and all the dots have lined up, you still have to take it to the next phase. And that's a magic one. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Brittany. You're welcome. Appreciate your time again. Thank and you. We'll, I was we'll had definitely so much have fun. you on again. So, all right. And cut scene. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Stop.